mean, we're professionals. We all always have everything in place. Are we ready to do this? I believe so. <sighs> BRTV. BRTV. <laughs> Padre with Mark VV of the Briar Bothy. And uh, today we're going to offer this here. You can't see that, can you? There you oh, go. There, there you go. So what's that say? Old Toby. And we're going to do some tasting notes on that for a yet-to-be-named program exclusively on Briar Report Television. Coming to you via the virtual airwaves of BRTV from the Big Easy in Louisiana, bringing you his philosophy and insight on life and all things pipe and premium tobacco related. Please welcome your host, Padre Piper. Hi, Mark VV. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Just organizing my tobacco here. Are you? Yeah. So uh, you know, we got a little uh, a little thing going on here. Uh, the Middle Earth series. Yes. We we are best known on Briar Re Report Television for what Phil has called uh, the most popular series to ever air on BRTV. That's us. I think it's also the only series that has ever aired on BRTV. We're not going to get into the specifics, Let's right? not get into all the details of that, but we did smoke through the sampler mm -hmm. of um, Boswell. Boswell's mm -hmm. English blends. And so today uh, we begin, we embark upon part one of a six-part series. Six. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six. I can do it in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Six. I could almost do it in French, maybe. Un, deux, trois. Then did uh, fail. That did it yeah. three times too. <laughs> and um, we're going to do uh, the Middle Earth series from the Country Squire. And you, uh, you've got the T-shirt. Sure. You've, you've got the, the coffee mug. mug. I would have my BRTV mug, but it was dirty, so I figured this is a uh, proper alternative. And I'm just realizing I have iced coffee from Panera Bread, who is not sponsoring this program. They are not. Though it would be nice if you are a representative of Panera Bread and you would like to sponsor our show, please. We're open to we're that. We're open to that. All right. Now, we're going to uh, each month, this is the month of July 2020, the pandemic edition, we are going to uh, smoke through one of these from this wonderful Middle Earth series from the Country Squire. And the first one is Old Toby. Now, the thing about Old Toby is, uh, if you've purchased the sampler already, if not, you go to the Country Squire and find it, just search BRTV sampler. Yeah. Uh, you can get this sample of all of these blends. We're going to do one in August, and that will be... Bag in. And then, uh, well, hold it up. Show the folks. Okay, hold on. And then talk about the order. You get an ounce of these in the sampler. And then in Bag September, in. we're going to do... Second breakfast. You're not going to hold that one up? Second breakfast. And October we're going to do, which I thought we should have done second breakfast in October, but I'm okay with that. October's Green Dragon, which Green is Dragon. fantastic. Um, November. Rivendell. Rivendell. And then we'll, we'll close it out in December. With King's Foil. King's Foil. Yes. So this is the six blends from the Country Squire Tobacconist. Yes. Um... Middle Earth series. Yes. So, uh, today we begin with Old Toby. Some of the folks who have already purchased this, I, I said this in a video I did for YTBC. I kind of had this fantasy that we were going to light up a bowl and people were going to light up a bowl with us, but they've got guys who've already bought this and they've smoked through the entire There's, thing. It's gone. I think Phil didn't Phil Phil's finish. Phil's gone. Phil, he finished Old Toby already. He finished so. Old Toby. He got a couple ounces of Cherokee, gone. gone. Or was it Choctaw? No, Cherokee. It was Cherokee. Cherokee. It was Cherokee. It's gone. So you people with your inability to delay gratification might need to reconsider this whole pipe smoking hobby. I now, mean, go ahead. Alternatively, you can just go back to the Country Squire website and buy more. You could. You could. And you probably should. Yeah. Uh, so why don't we get underway? Go ahead and pack your bowl, sure. and I'm going to explain the setting of this today as you can see 
What am I pointing to, Mark VV? The uh, the One Ring. It's the it's the Lord of the Ring. <laughs> <laughs> that, it's completely unintentional, but it, to, totally unintentional. Is it's being picked up in a picture frame. But turn it off. That we're too dark. And this is, of course, Rivendell. There you um, go. The uh, the city of elves. So um, that's that's our ring light. It's not really. I don't it, know what that is. To be all it does is it gives us a little bit better complexion. I think. I'm not sure it does more than that. But we can change it to. That's too bright, huh? And the light adds ten blue. pounds. All right. Um, are you finished loading? I mean, I've been stalling at this point to give you a chance to load your. I'm, I will say this: What you're you're smoking from a corn cob today? I am, I am. I am too. This is my country gentleman with a forever stem on it, and um, I have with us today mm. a brand new, and I mean brand spanking new, from the Dollar Tree. Well, I was gonna a lighter, and do you know how much this costs at the Dollar Tree? Mm. Probably dollars and some change. It cost a dollar. You got to add tax. There's tax. But there is tax. But um, so you know, a week or so ago, I think I told you this. I went to the Dollar Tree sure. and they weren't charging tax. And so I asked, "Hey, uh, why aren't you charging tax?" And the lady says, "Because there's a nationwide coin shortage." There is. That's Which I did. I just thought that was the dumbest thing ever. I hadn't times. heard it. So. Mark VV being a very high-powered banker, yeah, I, own, I, I texted own a bank. him. I said, "Can you believe there's a change shortage?" He says, "Yeah, that's actually it's true, <laughs> and true. it's it's COVID related. COVID right? related, yes. How is it COVID related? Because the employees that work at the Federal Reserve who roll and mint the coin were not going to work. Okay, I get the mint the part, the mint the part, the mint part, but roll." I mean, don't they have machines for that now? Well, they do. They have to have, have, to have somebody to load the machine. Oh, come on. I mean, it's I'm, true. Well, I mean, I'm sure there were employees that were there, but there was such reduced capacity. I mean, they're still putting out boxes, but it's like... I'm going to load my pipe. I ordered, you know, $1,000 worth of quarters, which is two boxes of quarters, and I got $30 worth last week. So, that, it's real. It's not... That's just bizarre. It's bizarre. Now, what's even more bizarre is that the Dollar Tree decided upon their own they, they just weren't going to collect sales tax yeah. and i'm pretty sure the local parish we don't have counties we have parishes i'm fairly certain the parish and the governor are saying dollar tree we want our sales tax probably illegal can i can i light my pipe with you why don't you go ahead and do that and we with, can with the dollar tree lighter yes i was going to light it with my fancy uh Caribbean, which i know also but fantastic i don't have 500 dollars to spend on a lighter they don't pay that much to clergy you know so i go to the dollar store you want me to talk tax about free are we going to talk about old toby before we start smoking it? well um i say we just go ahead and light up okay. and um so if, I don't just, if i don't describe the whole point of old toby and what, well what's so, I mean, mad at me well i do want you to describe the the um, the name, but we're going to talk about the blend too. The reason I want you to describe the name is because I am not, I don't know much about Tolkien's books. I told you I read The Hobbit in like eighth grade. That was a long time ago. I don't remember. And Flat Cat Piper, shout out, he did a video saying that you were going to give a description of each of the names. Apparently. So, before you get to that though, uh, Old Toby is um, comprised of uh, what, Virginia, Burley, and, and Black Cavendish? No, Virginia, per Burley, and Perique. Virginia, Burley, and Perique. And a sugar a, casing. A tiny bit of Perique, yeah. I think. Because yeah. I don't usually get... I mean, when Perique is done condimentally and done well, it really does enhance. It doesn't have to burn you up. You know, pepper! Yeah, I don't, okay. I don't think there's any black... If there is Black Cavendish, it, it isn't disclosed. But Yeah, now, that was me... Don't ignore that. There's no black average. Virginia, Burley, Perique. and a little bit of Perique. And um, why don't you go ahead as I light my bowl? I'd like to. That's a very pleasant room note. Very pleasant room note. Have you gotten compliments on this room note in the past when you've smoked it? Not for my wife. She doesn't like the smell. She, or does, she, she can't smell. smell. So that's. Uh, she can't smell. She's genetically unable to smell. Does this have anything to do with why she married you? Perhaps. I mean, I don't want to say anything, but 
you can be odoriferous from time to time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is southeast Louisiana. It's very humid and hot, so. Um, okay. It's a pleasant room note, but why don't you go ahead? Have you got a good light going there? You did your char. Yeah. And you, okay. Oh, I stole the good lighter from you. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is a fairly wet blend, but it, it does is. burn pretty easily. So. You know, I pre-gamed the other day. Did you see that? You didn't get to see that video, no, I didn't. did you? And uh, that is the one thing. And this was that was coming from a jar that I had from, I said 2017. It could be back to 2015. I mean, it's an old jar. Why I never went back to it, I don't know. Because it was really good. And I saved my tasting notes. I didn't want to get into it then. But it was still wet. And um, it could it could benefit from a little drying time, yeah. but we didn't do that today. Yeah, it'll, it'll take you a few a uh, few lights to kind of get it going. And that's okay. And talking while making a video, you have to relight anyway. So yeah. But could you, um, as I go ahead and light up, in all seriousness, and if you don't know the answer, that's okay. Yeah. But we have a cell phone somewhere we can Google it. Google. Do you know the story of of old Toby? Like, what does this title refer to within the J.R.R. Tolkien? Uh, you know, yeah. portfolio of writings. Well, I can't answer why old Toby was named old Toby by the country squire. I don't. I didn't talk to John David about about his his naming of each of the tobaccos. But old Toby, the reason I chose this as our inaugural tobacco, and I felt it was appropriate, is that old Toby refers to old old uh, Tobold Hornblower, and Tobold Hornblower was the hobbit that introduced. Uh, tobacco to the Shire, which is where the hobbits live, right? Um, so, uh, and when he brought the tobacco to the to the Shire, he, he he planted it and it grew, and they named that particular tobacco, which is called pipeweed in the uh, yeah in the Lord of the Rings. Uh, 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 tobacco generally is called pipeweed. Pipeweed, but then yeah. but in that specifically, they don't call it tobacco; they call it pipeweed. Uh -huh. So the pipeweed that he came up with, they called it Old Toby oh. after him. To, to, to Bolden, to Bold Hornblower. To, to Bold Hornblower. Yes. I had actually researched it really quickly, and I, I, I remembered Hornblower, and I remember it was a play on Tobacky. Tobacky. But I, to, and I still can't get the first name. To Bold. To Bold. I don't think it has anything to do with the. I don't know if Tolkien named him after the word tobacco. I have no idea. Sounds like he might have. But he may have. The, listen to this and tell me. Close your eyes for a moment and tell me what this sound reminds you of. Talking to me. Did you hear that? Did it come through with the mic? Did it come through with the mic? It wasn't as loud the second time, but because it's wet, it reminds me um, of Molto Dolce. Mm. When you light Molto Dolce, it's like pouring Rice Krispies for it breakfast. It's a crackle, yeah. Snap, crackle, and pop. This is not as bad as Molto Dolce. No. Molto Dolce, you know what the, the, the good thing about that tobacco is? You never have the jar. You can leave it in that tin, and you can leave the top off of it. It's Forever. Never going to dry out on you. It's just not. So, yeah, so Old Toby was, was named after uh, Tobold Hornblower. There were other blends that they uh, they had in Middle Earth, like Longbottom Leaf, if you've probably mm -hmm. heard of that name. Mm -hmm. um, there was Southern Star, I think, was one of the other blends that came from the uh, the Shire. Uh, but And, in fact, uh, at the Country Square, they did have... A blend called uh, Longbottom Leaf for a period of time that got discontinued because of some kind of ingredient in unavailability, and it had nothing to do. This was pre McClellan, McClellan collapse. Yeah, mm -hmm. so th this was something uh, unrelated. But and of course, Squire, we're giving them a shout out. Thank you, John David. Yes. Very generous of you to support Briar Report Television um, and and the two of us. Um, the, the check should be made out to him. I'm kidding. He's not supporting us. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's supporting well, us he, in spirit. He sent us these tobaccos he very generously, by the way. And that was very nice. Uh, but, you know, obviously the Country Squire is not the only tobacconist in the world to come up with a house blend based on these. Because... The shortcut to Mushrooms was based on... Toilet that's toilet right. And that's from on. Just For Him. Just yeah. For Him also has... A, I believe they have a long bottom. I believe they have a long bottom. They, they have a, a bomb... Bomb distill... Bomb... I forget the name of it. I have it. It's good. Tom Bombadil. 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 That's it. Bombadil. Yeah. So uh, I'm having a little problem keeping this, uh, but I didn't tamp, and I, I don't know what happened to. You got to tamp that ash. I've, I've been told that. Um, I I brought something in, but I don't know. It may have. It was. Um, 
uh, Tobacco Pipes International. You know him? Uh, he sent me oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. one that's shaped like a cigar, and I hope it didn't roll off the table. It'd or I, I could have just, could be in my pocket. It wouldn't too. be our channel, if, or your channel, rather, if uh, if uh, we didn't come, come somewhat unprepared on something. You so. know, that's life, dude. That's uh, <laughs> I've made it this far, and... And I'm not changing, and get off my lawn, and I'm going to tell a quick story, and then we can talk some more about these tasty notes, which I'm enjoying. This is very pleasurable. You could chug tasting. the heck out of this, and you're not going to get any kind of tongue bite whatsoever. That is so true, and I noticed that in the pregame video that I did on ITPC. I could not, and I was having some problems keeping it lit because I was talking, and it was a little wet. And it doesn't matter how many times you relight it, it didn't warm up. The bowl didn't warm up. The backy didn't warm up. The, um, it didn't bite the tongue. I don't, and, and that is, I've got to say that that is kind of a quintessential quality of the tobaccos that I've had from Country Squire. Yep. I don't know how John David does it, um, but the, they never bite. They just don't bite. Nope. And, you know, Treasure Island. Which is a a sweet, case, goopy. I mean, you you taste, yep. and it doesn't bite. I don't know how he does that. I just don't. Parsons Blend doesn't bite. As fruity as as aromatic as it is. Yeah. So you said you had a story. Mm hmm. I have a story. It has nothing to do with anything we're talking about other than get off my lawn. Arr. Arr. Friend of mine from high school. Posted on Facebook today a picture of his New Balance sneakers. <laughs> Why are you laughing? What before I can before I, I move forward with the story? And he's a year older than me too, and you're several years younger than me. You're a millennial. I'm a I'm an Xer, the last great generation. But he's older than me too, so you would think that. I'd be at least a year cooler than him. Right. But why did you laugh when I said New Balance? I, I don't know if it's just, just my perception or of uh, New No, Balance, it's not. Apparently it's universal and nobody told me. Go ahead. What What is your perception of New Balance? Is it just like the older person show? I mean... I only take a minute. <laughs> I'm glad you find that funny. <laughs> Laura so, buys them, so I really, my wife, she, she buys them too, but she, she, they're a work shoe for her. Apparently, if you're a woman and you buy New Balance, it's not, you know, a big deal, but if you're a dude that buys New Balance. Okay, so I used to be into running, yeah. and I, I haven't, I messed up my knees and such, so I can't do it, and I, <laughs> and I do need to get back into at least walking, but I mean, we're talking 12, 15 years ago I was into running, and New Balance was what I ran in. And um, number one, because I liked them. They fit well. Nike never fit me well. Nike always, yeah. they, they ran small. Sure they're and very here's the thing. There's a company called East Bay. They don't pay me to say this, but you've probably heard them. Anybody who's ever into running or walking knows East Bay because they sell tons of shoes on the Internet. Not in either of those things, to be okay. honest. Okay, well, the thing about it is, Shoes have a degree of, of, of variability in their sizing. Sure. But by brand, they're usually consistent. So if you're going to buy something online and you are familiar with the brand, then you know what your size is. And you can always, it's not like you have to go into the store and try them on. Now, the beauty of East Bay is I'm a little on the cheap side sometimes. So East Bay will sell last year's model running shoes cheaper than this year's models. Like, I care what year they are, right? I mean, right. if they're new and they got no mileage on them, that's why I'm buying them, so I don't care if they're the year befores. So I got into this New Balance thing because I could go to East Bay, get my size, and order what I wanted and have it delivered to the house, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. No one told me that somehow over the years, New Balance shifted into becoming what, this is the term. Dad shoes. Dad shoes, yes. Yes, very much so. And apparently the white ones with the N are the most classic dad. Yep. Which, honestly, I don't have those. I got a pair of those at home. 
So I have the ones that I use yeah. primarily uh, for exercise, for, for jogging, or for walking more. Uh, and they're a darker color, and they've got like some stripes, and I don't think yeah. they have the N on it. I do have a pair of black ones with a black N, which I wear with my, when I'm going casual around here, maybe I'll wear black jeans for or sure. a black clergy shirt, which I'm out of uniform today because it's a day off and I had to go get a haircut and such, so. But I was not aware that New Balance had taken a turn. Yeah. And was considered uncool. And then, and that, like, I care that it's uncool. I just, I'm just amazed at how many people knew it's uncool. And, and, didn't. and I did. No I mean, and it doesn't change anything. No, no, I'm it doesn't. still gonna buy New Balance, oh, and yeah. I'm gonna do it with a vengeance now, and I'm gonna scream louder. Get off my lawn, you young whippersnappers! You Remember, we went to Disney World two years ago. Yeah, two years ago, and we, I, in true dad fashion, I wore my uh, my white. With New the balance end, shoes with the, the end. Big yeah, blue so, end or? Absolutely. All right. That was my story. That had nothing to do with anything other than <clears throat> tell getting old. That's funny. Okay. Uh, th and this is what codgers do, right? They, they talk and tell stories while they enjoy a pipe. And I am enjoying this pipe, Mark VV. This is a, this is a home run blend, Old Toby, um, tasting notes. So Very good. It's got a... <laughs> That's my taste and note. It's got a... Uh, what do they call it? A sugar casing? Yeah, I think it's a, sh it's a sugar casing. Probably... Uh, I wonder, he has something called Sweet Burley that he does for the Country Square. I wonder if he puts a little of that in. I don't know. But it's... Um, yeah, it's just a str standard sugar casing. I don't think there's any vanilla in it. No, I don't I'm not getting that. Vanilla. No. Um, so th that's, that's good, right? Because... Yeah. How many aromatics have a vanilla flavoring to them? And Every the black other one? Cavendish. There's no black Cavendish, even though I came out the gates and misspoke. Uh, there's no black Cavendish. There's no vanilla casing. There's a sweetness to it, which I would not uh, consider your typical sort of overpowering yeah. aromatic it's sweetness. It is. It's present, it but it's subtle. It reminds me a little, not a, I don't know, a use the term 1Q, but it kind of reminds me a little of 1Q if it was less sweet, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. a less sweet 1Q. But I think uh, Cherokee is kind of like that too. There's a, uh, I, you, there's still an appreciation for the leaf that comes through in this blend. Mm -hmm. yeah, Whereas with some aromatics, you don't ever get to the leaf. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that I noticed, and it's too early in, in this bowl to be able to say this, but I'm going to say it based on previous bowls. Sure. The deeper you get into the bowl with this, um, the more the flavor sort of um, intensifies. The sweet, it's not like the, it becomes sweeter. That's not what I'm saying, but the volume of the flavor tends to crank up a little bit. And here's the other thing that unlike when that happens with a lot of aromatics and they start to get harsh, mm -hmm. this doesn't get harsh, which is also nice. If I recall, and I haven't had this, this blend in, in quite a while, <clears throat> is that the preak starts to peek through. You get a little more I was about to spiciness. Say I just got a little note of it. You get a little, note, a little more notes of the spiciness as the bowl gets a little lower and, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the strength from the burley comes through. And what's Less Virginia sweetness. Yeah. Uh, but you get more of the bold flavors. And what's nice about that is um, that's a nice play with that sugar casing. Mm -hmm. If you like a sweet and hot sort of or sweet peppery, it almost reminds me of uh, there are some, what am I thinking, there's some snacks out there. Is it like a, I'm thinking holidays. Where you get almost okay. This is I'm, I guess I'm thinking of the white chocolate covered pretzels, where you get that salty sweet. Kind of make me thirsty. I'm gonna eat pretzels. That's the play that's going on here. It's not the saltiness though, but it's the sweet play against the the occasional perique note popping through, mixed again with a very nice the, the I guess the burly is what's Giving it a tobacco, 
like yeah, it gives it gives it the body for sure. Gives it the body because mm-hmm. the Virginias come through with with a nice uh, tobacco as well, but they're also giving some natural sweetness to it. That's different than the casing that you kind of detect. Again, which I think is lightly applied. It's um, subtle, present, but subtle and not not overpowering it like a typical kind of aromatic you might expect from a typical aromatic. Yeah. So um, what I'm saying is I think an aromatic smoker would enjoy this immensely and an, as somebody who's not into aromatics would also probably enjoy yeah. going to Old Toby. I was going to say that. I think this is a perfect blend for the non-aromatic smoker that wants to try something a little new. Mm-hmm. Or just something from the, out of these six blends you'll probably find this the most surprising. And the fact that, uh, and I have, you know, I've been kind of chugging it, yeah. forcing it, trying on purpose. <clears throat> I mean, look, I'm holding this bowl. There's very little heat coming from it. It's almost as if this tobacco doesn't, I mean, it's burning. Obviously, it's burning. You see this, uh, boy, lots of smoke, too. I'm having a little little trouble keeping that lit, but that's but just... The heat, yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of times, though, with, with blends, um, the relight is what inevitably ends up heating up the tobacco and causing some of that, that discomfort. Yeah. That tongue bite. This does not do that. It doesn't. You no. can keep relighting it. Now, that was nice. I got a very nice, sugary, almost, that was almost like a pastry. It was almost like a bake. It's like going to a bakery and mm-hmm. getting a pastry. That sugary note, and I'm getting some tobacco flavor now. And every now and then, uh, you get the little peppery. And I think you're right, based on the the more recent bowls that I've had in the past week. I've had a couple. The perique becomes more of a player, yep. probably about halfway down. But still not. It's still condimental. It's not like a perique <clears throat> powerhouse. Country Squire used to have a wonderful Perique powerhouse, a vapor called Pirate's Alley. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it seemed like if I remember reading on the website the first time I bought it, 50% Perique. And I could be wrong about that because that's a lot. That's a lot of Perique. Yeah. But was it really that much? Yeah, I believe it was quite a bit. Like either 30 to 40, between 30 and 50% for sure, but... Which is amazing because I did, I am a Perique guy where the the I just wanted their condiment kind of like you are with Latakia. Yeah, I like a good bold Latakia presence, right? And you like it condimentally. The Perique, that's the way I like it. I like it to pop through and surprise me and, and lift right. it a little bit. And so I was surprised how much I like Pirates Alley, but it ain't there no more. You know, Pirate- Obviously, it was blended. It wasn't in. House blend. Yeah, yeah. And it was also blended uh, with a Pirate's Alley in New Orleans in mind. That right, whole, right, which is a, a little street in the French Quarter. Little, it leads little, right up to the St. Louis Cathedral. Little love letter in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Florida Lee was like that, too. That was another one. I don't think that... They, Florida Lee is a cherry blend? No, no, no. This is one no. that the country, the country Squire did. It was like... Um, it was right, a, but wasn't it... Sh- no, it wasn't, no, it wasn't a aromatic. Okay. Mm, no. Trumpeter. Trumpeter. Trumpeter, yeah. Trump- Trumpeter. And, uh, that was a cherry. Okay. I think Cordial Friends is another cherry blend. But uh, that Saratoga. Pirate's Alley, um, where I was going with this yeah. is one of the blends, Pirate's Alley is not a part of the Middle Earth series, obviously, but one of the blends in there, this Green Dragon, um, ceased to be produced for a little bit. Right. And the reason is... Um, the ingredients you couldn't get them. It was clearly it was made with some McClellan stuff. Yeah, but yeah, John David brought this back and he did a really good job. I don't yeah. think he missed a beat. Um, in fact, somewhere I do have just a little bit of the original Green Dragon left, and I want to do yeah. a comparison one. Well, yeah, day. I'm pretty sure they put red cake in it, so it's just my so, uh, my interpretation. But I think they I think they use red cake in there. So what I did was I reached out to John David, and he hasn't gotten back to me, and he probably won't. And I don't blame you. I wouldn't write me back either. Dude. Trying to get the secrets to his proprietary No, no, I blends. didn't. I didn't. I wanted to. I want. First of all, I wanted to thank him for for helping us do this program. But I also wanted to to give him a, a pat on the back for Green Dragon because it didn't miss a beat. It's a fantastic Virginia without the use of McClellan. And 
I wanted to ask him or just put a bug in his ear, like, have you thought of doing that for Pirates Alley? Right, right, Have right. you thought of bringing it back using non non McClellan components? I'm, and and if anybody can get close, he can. I'm He's sure got a he, gift. He can do it. I'm sure he has thought about it, and it's probably one of those things that's just racks it around in his brain until he gets it right and if he doesn't get it right he doesn't bring it back well I'm sure he's got I mean he's got a kid now and he's married I'm sure he's got plenty of other things to keep himself busy yep. rather than going into the lab, the blender's lab and I remember I texted him last week or something like that and I was asking him I think I was asking him like how, how the sales were doing with with the sampler mm-hmm. in and of itself and he said well I'm kind of on vacation now right now because his wife was getting some dental work done or something like that so he was at home with the baby and I'm like thinking to myself well it must be nice to be a shop owner and be at home for however long well, time you want he's got good staff <laughs> yeah he does very much so and he very has had good staff. staff although you know uh, I think both times I went with you uh, Caleb was there Caleb was Caleb, there Caleb ain't there no more didn't no, Caleb, Caleb move Caleb got married and I believe uh, his wife is pregnant but he still lives in Jackson yeah but he's not at the shop, is he? No, no. I believe he's working in. Uh, there's there's a bunch of local coffee shops in uh, in, in Jackson, like coffee roasteries, where mm-hmm. they uh, they roast the coffee beans, and I believe he works in one of those. Okay. Yeah. All right. And well, for some reason, I thought he had moved out of um, Jackson. Well, he was going to school. Uh, no, he didn't move out of Jackson, but he was going to school to be a, I believe, a civil engineer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, uh, Caleb is also the one who blended um, white rose. White Rose, I believe. Which Caleb, I love White Rose. I want to say Caleb is also responsible for um, for Kingsfoil. Okay. I, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I, I believe that was his last. Blend. Which I have not had. I've not had Kingsfoil. It's, now, uh, I'm going to tell you something about Caleb. Yeah. Uh, it, don't take it personally. I mean, everybody's got varying tastes. He hit a home run with this White Rose. I mean, oh, I, yeah, yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, it is good. But there was another one you brought me that he did that I just couldn't get through it. I had you make fun out. of it all the time. What was that? That's the you call it pine, pine 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 soil. Pine soil. <laughs> pine soil. <laughs> That's um shoot I can't remember the name of it right pine off. Pine soil, yeah. isn't it? No. Pine crest. Pine something. It's something. It's foresty of some sort. But oh my lord! I mean, he did get that flavor right. Yeah, he it did was very like much it up. was like smoking a damn pine cone. Yeah. Like getting. <laughs> I got a pine cone and I uh, I rubbed it out and I took some of the what are those things called those long thin things that come from the pine trees the, the pine needles, needles and you rub that in there <laughs> and maybe toss in a little perique I don't know I maybe. couldn't and you liked it I thought the things a great you blend really, yeah, yeah. There was real, and you know what which tells me tells me I probably should go back to it I guess it's more of a fall blend with a cup of coffee sweetened cup of coffee with some milk in it oh that blend is just heavy. maybe that's what it is maybe yeah. it needs a, a sweeter because i'm a black coffee guy except when i do iced coffee i do throw a little half and half in it but yeah. that it was a, to me it was a very uh dry tasting mm-hmm. blend Makes sense. and it is. so it may need something to complement it so i may need to go back to it because i gotta give caleb credit he he boy that white rose was it, that is the perhaps one of the most unique aromatics I've ever had, and it was supposed to be kind of a, a head nod, I believe, to maybe the Lakeland's essence with know. rose. Oh yeah, yeah, because it has rose water, yeah, it or something like that. But it doesn't strike me as that Lakeland perfumey thing that you get from Samuel Gullwith. No, it's not. It's not a Lakeland perfume. Not like yeah. that. But there was Grandma's definitely a full, panties. Yeah, Granny's panties, like Grouse Moore, which. It's, it's actually very good. <laughs> I, it is when I, when I want to do something different. That's my Lakeland go-to. Uh, Enner, Enner, Ennerdale. Ennerdale Flake. Yeah. Yeah. Ennerdale Flake is another one, but I don't find that's got the granny panty mm, the way um, the way Grousemore does. But anyway, so it's it's not like that. But there is a floral essence to it. Yeah. Uh, to this white rose, and so c- congrats. That was awesome, Country Squire and Caleb. So yeah. maybe Caleb can get on this uh, this Pirates Alley thing because he's obviously need you. he's got some skills. Please, please return. Um, but yeah, the pine soil just didn't do it for me. But I, I'm in all fairness, I do need to go back and try it again then because you know it could have been a bad pipe. It could have been a bad day, and I really think I only tried it that one time. Yeah, and spit it out. Like, nope, not me. Yeah, I think you should try it again. It yep. was just deserty, dry tasting. Too. Deserty, dry pine straw. Yeah. Yep. It was like smoking, yeah, pine needles. So old Toby, 
to old Toby is really treating me well. It has, you've seen me light it multiple times because again, we, we should have let it sit out and dry for just a few minutes would have helped. Um, but but we're talking then, too. Yeah. We're talking yeah. too. But these multiple rel relights have not done anything no. to harshen the flavor or to heat up the tobacco to make it too hot and to, to burn your tongue. This is a no bite blend, uh, which is fantastic when you can get that out of an aromatic. And it's a good aromatic in that, as we've mentioned, it doesn't have that uh, typical vanilla caramel mix to it. Um, right. But it does have the sugary. I would, I would want to say, and you might be able to speak to this, I have not had sugar barrel. I've had sugar barrel match, but I've only had a couple of bowls of it, so I don't know too, too much about it. But would you say that that sugar casing is in that sugar barrel I believe so. Brown sugar or uh, because if so, I need to go back to sugar barrel. I want to say it's been a while since I've had sugar barrel. But if yeah. I recall, the sugar barrel had this almost a licorice note to it, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. And okay. but it was sweet as well, so it was it was an interesting uh, blend. I'll have to revisit it as well because I, I honestly can't say. The volume of smoke that is created by this blend is also quite impressive, and the room mean, note is very. Um, Pleasant and gentle. Some room notes can be pleasant, but they can also be aggressive, right? Because it, it's still smoke. This, although it's it's voluminous in the amount, yeah. I don't think it would affect. I gotta quit knocking the table because the whole camera shakes. Um, I don't think it would be offensive to a non-smoker because it's not an aggressive. Uh, well, I guess you'll. I guess you'll know truly tomorrow when you come in. If it, right, uh, and it sticks know. around. And, uh, like that dead glass that, uh, what was that one from Bob? I don't even want to go. Railroad there. Station? I don't no, know. it wasn't Railroad Station. Was it Railroad Station? No. no, it was mild. It was mild English. It was mild English, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one that you up. would think would not. I'm still performing exorcisms on some of my vestments that would just sucked it up. Some, usually, sometimes in the late, late evenings around 2 o'clock, you can walk in and. It's catch up. The ghost ah, of the ghost. English. Somebody bring in the incense. We got to get rid of this. <laughs> this is an exciting uh, journey we're on right now. Old Toby, I, did you did you um, you had told me in a text? I think it was just yesterday that you right. had picked the order you wanted to do these. Correct. Things. We're following. And you said there was a method to your madness. We're following the fellowship. Is what we're doing. Oh, are we? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm not a Gerald Tolkien guy. So Old Toby, I named, well, I thought this was just a good inaugural blend because we're talking about the guy who brought tobacco to, 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 the Shire. to the Shire. And then Bag End is, of course, the home of the Hobbits. So that would be our next stop. And that's a Scottish blend, right? Scottish blend. I have yeah, not Scottish had it. Sure. Yeah. And what makes something Scottish in the I, realm of pipe tobacco? I have no idea. John David could probably explain this way better than because I, I think Because I think when a, I... It, it, how is it different than in English? I mean, does it have a Latakia in it? I believe there's a usually Scottish ones have a little bit of Latakia in them. Very like but I think when it's Scottish, whisper. you've got to say Latakia. Yeah. Because it's a different... Oh, maybe not. Anyway. It's a Scottish blend. So Bag End is a Scottish blend. But also, the reason I picked it second and not second breakfast is because I didn't want to do two aromatics back to back. Okay. That makes sense. Um, but it just it fell well with being in the middle of this and second breakfast, which is something that the Hobbits... Love to have. They have their breakfast. They have their second breakfast. And they have their noonsies. They're their kind lunch. of stout. They're afternoon they? yeah, they're, they're chubby. They're chubby. That's why they have. Two so they breakfasts. have they, they, every time. Food is extremely important to hobbits. So mm -hmm. they have you know. I said first breakfast, second breakfast. They got noonsies, lunch, afternoon snack, dinner, supper. They just they have me, excuses to eat. Let me ask you something, and you yeah. may not know the answer to this, and it could just be me sort of <clears throat> projecting my worldview into this, but uh, I do know J.R.R. Tolkien was a Christian. Yes. Um, and he and C.S. Lewis were very good friends, and C.S. Lewis, of course, a, a, a prolific Christian author, um, and even snuck Christianity into his, you know, fictional kind of stuff that he would write as a I'm assuming J.R.R. Tolkien did too. So when you start talking about the meals that the hobbits eat, second breakfast and such, it, it made me think of the divine office, the, um, the, the liturgy of the hours. Okay, which for yeah. folks who don't know what that is, in the, in the liturgical tradition of which Tolkien was a Roman Catholic, C.S. Lewis was an, uh, an Anglo-Catholic, an Anglican, um, 
the, the, they would have prayed the liturgy of the hour. So you would have prayed before the sun came up, and then you would have prayed earlier and later in the morning. Then you would have prayed midday prayer, and then you would have prayed in the afternoon, and you would have prayed in the evening, you would have prayed Compline to wrap it up before you go to bed at night. And, me, and that's what these foods remind me of. And that, maybe Tolkien had something to it when he wrote, you know, all these different aspects of the hobbits having these different meals. As you know, he was, yeah, a fellowship of, of food yeah. is another way of saying a communion with, we would say communion with Christ. Uh, through prayer, okay. so I'm just I'm just tossing that out there. Somebody who knows more about Tolkien uh, and his writings, writings yeah, yeah, could could let me know if I'm off base on that. It's just I'm just tossing it out as a possibility. Yeah. So okay, we're gonna do second breakfast in October. That'll yeah. be uh, mm -hmm. video three. Then we get to another, and second breakfast is an aromatic, and it's got a maple uh, tone well, to maple it. Maple vanilla, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Then of course we come to the Green Dragon, which is where the hobbits traveled with. Strider, who turns out to be Aragorn, of course. So Green Dragon is what, like something they ride on? It's a it's dragon. A, no, it's a, it's a inn in Bywater, which An is inn, a another, place where they stay. Mm -hmm, where they stay, where they go eat, and they stay, and it's a okay. very popular inn in the in the Hobbit uh, town of Bywater. Bywater. Uh huh. In, in we the, have in a the Bywater shop. dish trick here in New Orleans. We do. Yeah, Bywater. All right. So, so once they leave the Green Dragon and they travel on their way, eventually they'll make Virginia. it. Virginia. Eventually, they'll make it to Rivendell. Which is a light aromatic, which I also have not Cocoa. had uh, in a long time. But I do remember it having a slight, light topping to it. Yes. Almost it's a cocoa. cocoa. Yeah. It's cocoa and okay. uh, vanilla, I believe. Yeah. And finally, this... King's Foil, King's which I've Foil never had. Is, is it in English? No, a Virginia. I believe it's a Virginia blend. Okay. Um, and this references, of course, there's, an, I believe, an herb in Middle Earth called... Aranus or something like that. I have no I can't remember what the word for it is, but it references um, Aragorn, which is the the king. That he goes by Strider, but he doesn't know he's the king. The, he doesn't know he's the king. He doesn't know he's the heir to the throne. Oh he's not king yet. He's not king yet kind of thing. Heir apparent in the story. Heir apparent kind of thing. Um, but King Swell, he, he they I think they named the Arab King Swell because he used the King Swoil herb to heal some of the hobbits during their journeys. I forget what the whole story behind oh. King's Foil is, but they, they do call it King's Foil in the books. So it's got a balm quality right. to it. Right, right. So very, I figured it would be nice. Again, very spiritual. Yeah. So I had no real specific reason for putting King's Foil at the end other than references. Well, it was references. the last one to come out right. in the series. Also the last one to come out, so. In the Makes series sense. at Country Squire, was the last one to be produced. And we'll talk a little bit more about King's Foil when we come to it, of course. Yeah. Once, now, I do, once I do my research. Okay. Have you read The Hobbit and the three Lord of the Rings trilogy mm -hmm. books? It was a long time ago, but okay. I, yeah, I remember them recently. And movies? Yeah. I love the movies. All right. And are the movies true to the books? I mean, they're like any other fictional adaptation of, of, a, of a work like, like Lord of the Rings. It's, it's, there's some accuracies and some inaccuracies. But okay. So it's not so than, I mean, because there are some that are really good and there are some like... But they hit... Yeah, I've read the book and then I saw the movie and I'm like, it's, it's like two different things. They more or less hit, the, hit a home run with them. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I would say. And the Hobbit movies were a little... I think they, they took the, the source material and broke it up into three movies when it could have been one. Yeah. Um, but... You know, so they extrapolated and exaggerated a whole lot of stuff in, in those So wait, let me run that past... Run that past me again. You're saying... Now, if I'm correct, there's The Hobbit, which is like a prequel, prequel to the Lord three of the Lord of the Rings yes. books. But when they made a movie of The Hobbit, they made three movies of The Hobbit? Yes. And then they made the three Lord of the Rings books into movies, too? No, Lord of the Rings movies were first. And then Peter Jackson came back after and made The Hobbit. What I'm getting at, though, is there are three Lord of the Rings movies, mm -hmm. just like there are three Lord of the Rings books. Correct. And there are three Hobbit movies... But only one Hobbit book, Correct. which is a very thick book. Right. So, so it's a bit long. I don't know if it's longer than any one of the individual Lord of the Rings books, but it is, it is a long book. And if I remember Gandalf, is that his name? Yes. Gandalf. He was like a wizard. In Gandalf the, the Grey, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's one of the first characters you meet in the Lord of the Rings, and he's smoking a pipe. And did you play D&D, &D? Dungeons and Dragons? It's what, kind of, what kind of questionnaire is this? Yes. I well, I mean, I was, again, I was exposed to it in junior <laughs> high, and um, I went along. Like, I played, I'm like, ah, Did you play Gandalf? Yeah, because it's cool. And, and then I read The Hobbit, like, yeah, all the cool kids are doing it, and I'm like, what the hell is wrong with these people? 
That's what I was thinking down deep. But when you're, you know, 13 years old, 14 years old, you, you'll go along with a crowd sure. to be cool. And it just never really struck me. And it may as an adult. I had, believe it or not, a little problem with distraction and paying attention as a kid, which is clearly much improved as an adult. So perhaps <laughs> if I went back today and read those or watch the movies, I would get greater joy out of it. It's worth it. I think you probably should read the books as opposed to watching the movies. Because there is far more pipe smoking in the books. Yeah, because obviously the movies being newer, we can't have that. I mean, has, no, is there they, a they, sense? Yes, they did, they absolutely. Did. There were scenes in the movies that were specifically referencing pipe scenes smoking. in the book and pipe smoking. But yes. do you think if there wasn't this kind of politically correct movement of getting rid of tobacco in our society that they would have taken greater liberty of using more pipe smoking in the movies if Maybe the movies were made 30 years ago 40 years ago there's quite a bit in the movies already so okay. I, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't agree necessarily with that okay assessment because Good. I think there were there was even I, if I recall correctly the movies did have quite a bit of pipe smoking and they did not shy away from 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 making it a focus of the character like Kandoff First time you meet him, he immediately pulls out a pipe and he's smoking tobacco. All right. And he's blowing, he blows uh, smoke rings, uh, smoke rings and sh makes them into ships and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's featured pretty prominently, I think. Now, Missouri Marisam has a, uh, what do they call it? Uh, a shot, uh, what do they call their tribute to the Lord of the Rings? They have, a, they they have the, the Shire, elf, the Shire, the Shire and the Elf, right? The Shire, the Elf, the Dwarf. The Dwarf. Okay, yeah. the Dwarf is... The Wizard. Yeah, they all right, the one. Wizard's the big one. The Dwarf is the small one. They yeah. have the others. All right. And so um, I guess what I'm asking is in the books slash movies, they tend to not... They don't smoke stubbies. No, I think usually, they usually, usually have a longer it's pipe. It's a longer pipe, yeah, yeah. usually it's something of some kind of church warden. Gandalf smokes a church warden, I believe. Mary and Pippin, I don't know if they could remember they had like longer pipes, but they probably did. Okay. Hobbit sized curious. pipes. Hobbit sized. Because they're shorter people, or beings, I guess not people. Hobbits are short, right? And chunky. Yeah. I want to see how there was a scene. In I have friends who are like that. They're kind of short and chunky. I believe there's a scene in the movies where, I don't know if it's in the movies or if it's in the extended editions where they, they, they had some extra, extra stuff, footage they yeah. put in, but Merry and Pippin are sitting on the walls of Isengard after it gets destroyed by the, uh, the Ents or whatever, and they, um, they are, I believe they're smoking a pipe. Yeah. All right. Or they find some, some pipe tobacco in, uh, in Saruman's stash, if I recall correctly. Saruman? Saruman is the evil wizard. Oh, an evil wizard, and Gandalf's a good wizard? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. Let's circle back to old Toby. I'm trying to look. Uh, oh my! Have we really been on that long? How long is it? Forty, almost forty oh, minutes. Oh, the, the first the first video is going to be longer anyway. I think, because so. why our thoughts are disorganized. Sure. I, I <laughs> honestly though, I'm going to say this, and you can agree if you're still with us. If you could agree or disagree with this, cut this off. <laughs> Time flies by a little faster. Or you you notice it a little less. When it's an enjoyable experience, yeah. right? Now, the company is enjoyable. Oh, thank you. But the, what we're enjoying in our bowl is lending to that. I yes, believe. absolutely. This is an enjoyable smoke that you don't have to... One of the things for me that makes it a smoke enjoyable is not having to worry about it. So I don't have to worry about, oh, i got to put it down and let it cool before I go back to it. You don't have to worry about it with this. This is still... This is still as enjoyable as when I first lit it. It's not harsh, it's not biting, it's not hot. It's not heating up. I finally got to the bottom of the bowl and I think it's actually starting to get a little a little warm. I just got Speaking. a little gurgle. But I have I think I might have a bigger bowl. My uh, country gentleman bowl on this pipe might be a little bigger. What do you have? A fifth avenue there? I don't remember what, what this is, is called. That? This is not a country gentleman. This is a This is the first gurgle I'm probably American Patriot passing the halfway point. Yeah. And I'm just getting a little moisture. And, you know, I'm a wet smoker. That's, that's on me, uh, probably more so than the blend. Because I noticed the other day, when I was pre-gaming, I didn't get moisture. But I was... I don't think I smoked it as aggressively then. Yeah. And there was no moisture in the bottom of the bowl either, so... All right. Yeah. I think that's a... So as we wrap up our flavor profiles and such on this... Uh, 
very enjoyable. It does not tend to be um, a rapid paste burn. No. You probably will have to relight it a few times unless you unless you let it sit out a while. But even though, even so, I believe, I'm sure he tops it with some kind of PG, which is propylene glycol, you know, so it retains the moisture because of that, like they do with most, most aromatics. Um, so it will be hard to dry it out even if you want it to. Now, I tend to get more of the, um, I'm a little deeper into the bowl and I'm getting a little bit more of the perique coming through. Particularly on the retro hail, but again, it's not like slapping you. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. And yeah. uh, it plays. It's it's kind of a tickle, which is nice to me. That's a good use of the pepperiness. Yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. And it plays well against the sweetness, which again is not this overly aromatic type of sweet. It's just enough to cut the the edge off the tobacco, if you will. Mm -hmm. Just enough. And the leaf is still present. I still get a, a good tobacco taste to this. I get a lot of the, I guess, I guess the burley is what you would get out of it this, at this point. But you know, I, one of the things that has made me shy away from some burley blends, lots of burley blends initially, I'm starting to realize I like Virginia burleys, Bay Burrs, mm -hmm. uh, where the burley kind of plays second fiddle to the Virginia. Um, but straight burleys sometimes lots of blends to me get cigarette you're right and this burley in here is done well where you get that tobacco leaf flavor and presence but it's not doesn't taste like a camel or a mulberry no, i think that's probably the, with it with the virginias you kind of get a, a good play of flavors absolutely yeah. now here's the other thing um i don't find this to be a heavily I'm going to make a word up. Nicotinated blend. Uh, I am not feeling any effects of nicotine, and we have been into this now for, you know, we've been probably, it's 52 minutes almost, yeah. um, and we've probably been smoking for 45. Yeah. And um, so the nicotine, which sometimes, again, burleys can give you a little extra nick, I'm not getting that from this. Um, I would say that this is probably a little past the lower end, uh, uh, yeah, there's mid no, level of low. I'm not getting much of, it, yeah, much of that at all. Which is fine. I like that because I tend to be a little bit sensitive. And, to if, I, and if I can plug my own word, which I came up with, you mm -hmm. heard it here first uh, the aromasticity. Aromasticity. is very low. There's okay. not a whole lot. You're going to, the sugar casing, but that's it. Now, you're going to taste that, and there's not going to be any other flavors. One artificially. Of the, one of the things we had talked about with Phil is how do we get people to respond to this? I mean, they can leave comments. And I am the world's worst at going back to BRTV and answering comments. i got to get better at that, and I apologize. But I had initially said, well, why don't we just encourage people, if they don't want to make a video response, they can leave a comment where they follow the protocol that tobacco reviews use is because everybody's familiar with that one. You know, there's strength of flavor. There's yep. room note. There's... Um, I don't know what they are. It's five or six different ones, right? Right. <laughs> I but I think yeah. that here's what I wish more people would include in their reviews. For you, because this is, this is going to be persons are going to differ on this, but for you, does the blend tend to bite you, right? Because some people will say, <laughs> this bites me, and other people are like, what are you talking about? It but just for you, what's the, is there a bite? on it right yeah. maybe a zero to five you know and i don't know if zero is no bite i guess zero is no bite. yeah and five is like it's biting right uh aromisticity i think should be something that is addressed um the uh copicity <laughs> copious amounts of smoke i i find that curious how much smoke does the blend well, I think, uh, produce i think that's i think it's aesthetically pleasing, if that makes any sense. Right? I think uh, it is. Yeah. yeah, I think Nick Hit should be included. People will write that up on tobacco reviews. They include it, but they don't necessarily put it up there. And I think here's the problem: people, some people's strength means nicotine. For other people, strength means like, the strength of the flavor. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of subjectivity within what we do well, i think that's, that's that's tobacco in general there's so much Absolutely. subjectivity but there's subjectivity in the attempt to make it objective too sure, when, yes. when strength means different things to different people sure. so what are we saying how do we want you to reply to this we have no idea 
We don't care. We just want to hear from you. Nick we'll hit. Want to, yeah, yeah. If you want to use the word Nick hit, Nick aramisticity. Hit, vitamin N. Vitamin and vit N. Uh, aramisticity, yes. What's the word you came Cop- up with? Copacity. Cop- what's the other word you came up with? Uh, I came up with another one. Yeah, bite. You forgot it already. The bite. The, the bite. bite. Le- the bite number. The bite level. I don't know. Did I? <laughs> we'll have to watch it in replay. Did I come yeah. up with it today? You just did. You just did. I thought it was a cop. Copa. Copa. Copacity. 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 We're, we're professionals, damn it. We want to hear what you think of this. Yes. I, I like it. Would I buy it again? Yeah. Am I? No, because I've got a jar of We've it. We've got plenty of it. But uh, yeah. I, I will go back. And the, the, I'm, I'm a little troubled on my own that I have not gone, that I bought it years ago and didn't return to it. And I think one of the reasons I didn't is I was so into McClellan. Yeah. That when I was, you know, when that was available, then I was getting their aromatics. I was getting their Palomine. I was getting their holiday spirit. Um, and so, you know, there were some of these country squire blends, Parsons blend, um, uh, Treasure Island, this, that I would, I would get, but they weren't, you know, my regular go-tos. Um, so this is nice. They're and, very good and... Very, very nice. I highly encourage you to uh, to go support our uh, friends at the Country Squire for being so generous uh, with assisting us with this. So in the wrap-up, what is it that we, you know, here's what I don't want us to do. Don't rank them. Don't rank them. Yeah. We did that with Boswell's, and I felt so much pressure after that. Well, I, I feel like with these. and To me, this is dichotic. Would you go back to it? I'd go back to it. Sure. Yeah. No, I feel with the Country Squire blends, I'm going to give them, just because of my relationship with John David and my, my relationship with the Country Squire and Country yeah. Squire Radio at, at large, I'm not going to dislike any of these verbally, I guess is what I'm going to say. You're not going to dog him on I'm not going to dog any of these blends. I do, I will say that I, out of the six of these, I probably will not like Second Breakfast the most. Out of, out of the six, it's probably going to be the, 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 the weakest of the six for me, but it's still a very good blend. It's and that's another one that I, I have a jar of that I've, yeah. I, I've had a few times, never went back to, because in my mind it was seasonal. Yeah, uh, it's a fall blend for me. Green Dragon, I just love Rivendell. Rivendell, another one. I love. Another one you love Rivendell. I love Rivendell. And I've got it again, jarred. <laughs> never really went back to it. King's Foil, I've never had. Bag End, I've never had. Bag End out of the six is probably my favorite. Really? Mm-hmm. Bag End, and then Rivendell's right next to it. All right. So this is going to be a fun journey. Into the Middle Earth with the Middle Earth series. Up from Lord of the Rings. Uh, and uh, take take a trip with us next next week, next month. Next month in August. It's a bag end. And uh, what I'll do is I'll include the link. You can uh, still get the sampler, even though we've done old Toby. You can do old Toby and, you know, re rewatch this and yeah. smoke it smoke with, it with us. us. Yeah. So I'll put the link down if you want to get it. Uh, John Davis got a great price. You get uh, an ounce of each of these, which is a total of six ounces. Uh, he sells it for under thirty dollars, which I I think it's cheesy that we've been saying that it's twenty nine ninety nine. Under thirty dollars. Under thirty dollars. And I don't know. There's some shipping. You but pay a little shipping, but it's not super expensive. You'll probably no, spend thirty five I mean, bucks total. He, he ships quick. Yeah. And, uh, so <clears throat> it'll get to you very fast. And um, if you want to join us next time. Uh, then you can do bag in and you can wait and do it with us or you can be like some of the folks in the community who have no ability to delay gratification and smoke through the whole blasted thing so by next by bag in when this this video is released for for the bag in blend uh phil will have finished this for sure oh uh, phil's already threw all six ounces i believe <laughs> plus the 42 pounds now, i think he said i think he said he, he wanted to because we didn't say which was our second blend. He, oh, he went to hold off? He held, he held off. Like he didn't smoke any of them. Because he's like, I don't want to just smoke random blends here. I want to know. So now you know. Phil. There it is. So also, of course, a shout out to Phil. Great guy. Does great work in the uh, uh, whole community of ours. Has um, almost 1,000 subscribers now over in YouTube, the YTPC. Didn't you say he was going to make a video? And has never made a video. Yeah. But, um, there's some folks trying to get him to do that. And apparently if he gets to, to a thousand, not only will he, I heard it's going to be done in the Speedo. 
<sighs> Poor Phil. We love you, Phil. We do. Thank you for making this happen yes. on BRTV. Thank you to John David, the Country Squire. Thank you to Mark V. V. of uh, the Briar Bothy. Thank you. Which makes it almost sound like you have a com commercial entity there, the Briar yeah. Bothy. Yeah, I was in the Briar Bothy yesterday. I was literally in it waiting to record this video. We were supposed to record yeah. this. You had some technical difficulties. Then I went all over to his, YouTube his and tried to do uh, a live, and um, I couldn't get audio, which then we replicated that problem here before we recorded it and fixed it. Yes. We still don't know what the problem was, why we couldn't get your signal yesterday. I have, I have some solutions in, uh, in, in route. So. so. All right. So until next month, it is whatever his name is. This Briar Bothy? Mark VV of the Briar Bothy. Yes. And I'm Bob Drake. Can I sign off? Yeah, go okay. ahead. Wishing you and yours God's peace, grace and blessings and this is where we uh, fade to black fade to black was this, this is we're fading but then we keep talking and i'm gonna take a sip of my panera you bread ice coffee. you think they're still listening after an hour slog has it been that long yes good lord it's over now if you're still listening god bless your soul yeah you probably should get like a real hobby that's all i'm saying because i don't know it's us and i thank you for liking us but there, you could spend your time probably much more We're out of here. better. Hey, Blue Dog, if you <laughs> made it this far, I do hope that rotator cuff What's is up, Blue Dog? Hope that rotator cuff is healing.